Amen. We thank God much for you. Amen. We want to introduce to all of you a true apostle in the last days, Pastor Gino Jennings. <clears throat> Greetings, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. We bear witness as always, there is no God but one. We thank him for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and the true teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. We thank him for guiding us, leading us, and instructing us by scripture <clears throat> in the way of holiness. To all of our ministers, we thank God for all of them. If there are any visiting ministers that is here, you're welcome to come up and make yourself at home. I had a beautiful meeting last night. 23 went down last night in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and uh, one of the brothers sent a uh, picture, text me a picture I didn't know that my brother, the other cameraman, Brother John, went down last night also. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, we thank God for this message because uh, all of our cameramen, is, they, they got the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus now. <laughs> and you, you got to remember, these brothers, was all Catholics, raised, bred Catholics, Ron Skaleski and all of them. But the word of God have a way of cutting through to you if you stay around it long enough. We are thankful for the word of the Lord because God is doing a good job everywhere we go in the world, God willing. I think this week we'll be going to Sacramento, California. Then from there, we will go to San Francisco. Then from there, we will go to Los Angeles. And then come back <coughs> to Philadelphia just to get ready to go somewhere that I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, we're laboring hard, striving to reach the soul of men yeah. and women that are dying without God. We're living in the last days, and you can see the roundup of souls taking place before the Lord come, and that's what it is. It's a roundup of honest, sincere people who wants to be on the Lord's side, and if you want to be on the Lord's side, you're going to have to make the change, not him you're going to have to come up to what he has written because he's not coming down to us at all. All right, let's go to work in the book of scriptures. Mm -hmm. Let's open your book of pain up. We are getting to the Bible. I want to work on the armor of God today. Amen. <clears throat> you don't need armor if you're not in the fight. You don't need armor if you're not in war. Now, as I often say, we came up in the hood and we was out there fighting. We didn't need armor if we was out there mixing it up in the street. Armor is for war. And a war is bigger and larger and worse than a fist fight. Because you can lose your life. Spiritually, you can lose your soul. That's right. The word of God is here, brothers and sisters, for our protection. But one cannot be properly protected without teaching. Always remember, <coughs> teaching aids one to protect themselves. Now I want to break down the armor of God 
and show you what each piece is designed for and what part of your body it protects. You know, coming up in the hood, when we fought, it was bare knuckle. And then sometime the old hairs would put gloves on us. But the gloves were so thin, you still felt our knuckles. Hmm. Well, the greatest of all teachers is God. And we encounter so much in life. Sometimes it seems like it's more than just a regular fight. It seems like you're actually in war. I want the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, and I want all of you to follow me and judge yourself according. And to all of my viewers, we greet all of you moreover in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember, our international headquarters is in the wicked city of Philadelphia, in the state of Pennsylvania, 5105 North 5th Street on the corner of Lindley Avenue, where you're always welcome to come and visit that beautiful campus that God gave us. Amen. And come and hear the word of God, preach and follow and obey the same. I want all of my viewers to prepare yourself for our international holy convocation that will be taking place in the month of July. Don't miss it. Be there. And let us know what the message of holiness is doing for you. All of you that are here, we hope to see all of you in Philadelphia. Because I know some of you don't go nowhere but cross the street. We want to get you out of your house, get you off your porch or in a rocking chair. <laughs> Come on out to Philadelphia and meet your extended family because they will be there from different parts of the world. I'd be so glad when our main auditorium is done because they have been outgrew the gymnasium. Oh, yeah. They outgrew the gymnasium in, in the conventions, what the cameras don't show is uh, classrooms on the second level that they use for overflow rooms and they can't fit in there. They be in the hallways, they be on the stairwells. So I'd be so glad. I mean, our crew was working hard. Uh, my brother who's headed the project out of Baltimore, Brother Raj, and uh, he talked to me a few months ago. He said, Pastor Jennings, me and my crew was looking, God willing, to try to have you in the lower auditorium at least by October or before. So we're looking for that, and we hope the administration will build them will be done simultaneously. But they're not even going to fit in the lower auditorium. And uh, they, they, they just won't be able to do it. In the main auditorium, <clears throat> we can hold about 2,500 or 2,700. But the way things are going now, by the time we get in there, they won't fit in there. The Lord is truly, uh, I thought about uh, what he told the apostles. The apostles was fishing at one time and told the Lord we didn't catch nothing. The Lord let them know, you just throw your nets out there again. And when they brought the nets in, the nets broke. That lets you know if you do it the way God tell you to do it, you will get some results. You go out there and try to do it on your own, you're just not going to do it the way God wants you to do it. And this is what God has done and is presently doing for the truth of God. Everywhere we go, hundreds are going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is in every state, every town, every village, every city. And it never matters to me how hostile that city is. I don't, I don't even care. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll go there with God everlasting word with the one stone in my sling. That's right. And we'll go meet any Goliath anywhere in the world because we know when the word hit him, God removed that head. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to work, Williams. Come on. In the book of Ephesians <clears throat> chapter 6, and we'll start at verse 10. Follow me in your Bible. All right. Finally, my <clears throat> brother, be strong. Begin at verse 8. At verse 8. Mm -hmm. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, uh -huh. the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Yes. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, mm -hmm. forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Yes. Neither is there respect of persons with him. I'm glad God don't have favoritism. Amen. Preachers have favoritism. Yeah. They favor you based upon who give the most money. That's right. God don't have favoritism. If you got a penny and give that from the heart and someone got a million dollars and give that to be seen, God going to honor your penny. 
That's right. He ain't going to pay your million no mind. That's right. All right. Finally, my brethren. Now, after all is said and done. Finally. The conclusion. My, finally, my, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Now, I want to take my time and soak you a little. The Bible says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, because in most cases, finally is the conclusion. And when you finalize a thing, sometimes most is weak in the Lord. And what bring about weakness in many cases is the atmosphere that we're around. That's right. The atmosphere is like changing the climate. It is written, when iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax what? Oh. Shall wax cold. Oh. So there's some plants, when a frost is about to come at night, that woman may cover it. Because the frost can kill the plant. Sometimes many of us have gotten around a cold atmosphere. That's right. Which have hindered or altered our spiritual growth and our spiritual development. That's right. And sometimes for proper growth, we may have to disassociate ourselves from different places, persons, and things. That's right. For proper development. Some people are like an eclipse. Are you listening? What do you mean? An eclipse is when I'm told the moon come in line with the sun. Proof that the sun is there, you can see a ring of light on the outside of the moon. But the moment the moon come in line with the sun, it changed the atmosphere of the earth. And where it was hot, it get cool. So now the plants, if there's a shadow of darkness upon the earth, the plants start reacting as if it's night. That's right. Versus the way they would act when it's day. That's right. A lot of time we are strong, sound, firm, solid, stable, focused. Until we experience climate change. What do you mean you got natural climate change, but you got spiritual climate change? That's right. In the book of Revelation, God preached three temperatures. Mm -hmm. Hot, cold, lukewarm. In the book of Revelation chapter 3. I want all of you to follow me and follow me, follow me now. Revelation We're going to Sunday three. school this afternoon. That's right. All right. Revelation chapter 3, we'll start at verse 14. <clears throat> yes. And mm -hmm. to the angel of the church of the Laodosians write. To the angel of the church of the Laodosians right? These things saith the amen. Wait a minute. It, 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 that sounds so beautiful to me. Amen. These things saith the amen. The amen. Now, a lot of times you say amen. Right. But you are not the amen. The amen. When you say amen, you are witnessing to the truth. That's right. But God is called the amen because he bear witness to himself. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Listen. The faithful and true witness. I told you. He is the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. He is the beginning of God's creation. I know thy works. Look at here. Amen. What works do you and I have that God don't know? Mm. All of our works, all of our accomplishments, all what we are trying to accomplish. Right. God know our works. And being that God know our works, we might as well be honest with our works. That's right. Because we want God blessings upon them. That's right. And we always, in all of our works, want to keep God first. It is God that set the standard of excellence. Don't let no one else set a standard for you. 
Sometimes people say, you're not this, you're not that, you're not the other because they feel as though you're not what they want you to be. You don't have to be what they want you to be, but you must be what God requires you to be. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Listen. I know thy work. I know thine work. That thou art neither cold. Hold it. I want everyone to pay attention to this. The Lord says, I know your works. You're not cold, cold nor hot. And you're not hot. I would. I would, or I rather, or I prefer. Thou word cold. God say, I want you to be cold. Or hot. Or at least be hot. So then. So then. Because thou art lukewarm. Because you're lukewarm. And neither cold and nor you're hot. And not cold or hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. I don't want you. That's right. Now let's break it down. Amen. <laughs> How many here would want to be hot for the Lord? Raise your hand. How many here would want to be cold? Raise your hand. That lets you know they've been listening in the past. Yes, man. <laughs> Amen. You know. <laughs> they've been listening, Pastor. I asked listening. that some time ago. Everybody look dumbfounded. <laughs> now, the Lord says he rather or he prefer that you are cold or hot. Now, let's see what cold or hot represent. Cold don't always represent sin. We know the book says when iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But that's not what it's talking about. No. If you take meat and put it in the freezer, that cold preserves the meat. That's right. It also stabilizes the meat. That's right. If I buy a fresh chicken that's not in the freezer and hit you in the head, you'll feel it. <clears throat> but if I put it in the freezer, yeah. <clears throat> let it stay there for about three weeks and take that same chicken and hit you again, <clears throat> I'm going to knock you out cold. That's right. <clears throat> because the cold held the flesh together and stabilized it and made it heavier and stronger in weight. That's right. God says mm -hmm. he rather that th I know thy work. Listen. Still in Revelation 3 and verse 15. I know thine work. That thou art neither cold nor hot. He says you're not cold or hot. I would. I would or I rather. That thou word cold. Hold it. Cold. First he wants you to be cold. Cold. Just like that meat is in the freezer. Right. It becomes stable. That's what God wants out of you. That's right. He wants to stabilize your mind, soul, body, and spirit. Because when you buy a fresh chicken, the meat has flexibility. The flexibility cease is when it's frozen. That's right. When you come to God, you're not stable. No. You have flexibility. That's why when you repent of your sins and do get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, sometimes you still drift off back to that false religion that you came out of. That's right. Because you're not yet in the ice box of the scripture. That's right. But if you sit around the word and let the word freeze you. Mm. Amen. Make you solid, make you sound, make you firm. That's right. When that meat is in the freezer, it changes weight. That's right. It gets heavier. Yeah. And being that it gets heavier, it can endure more yeah. than it endured before it got placed in the freezer. That's right. When you just come into the knowledge of the truth, you're not scripturally sound. You're not scripturally solid. You're not scripturally firm. You have to be in it a good long while. Oh, yeah. Until your mind is so solid in the scriptures, none of the false teachings that God delivered you from have any influence on you ever again. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It have no more influence on me. 
My mind is frozen solid that is one. My mind is frozen solid that God is one. My mind have no flexibility. You know you have a freezer, then you have what is called a deep freezer. That's right. The scriptures is our deep freezer. That's right. We want our mind, soul, body, and spirit to have all the stability of heaven. Amen. That way we are sound, rooted, settled, and no false doctrine can come in that will even make me consider it. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? I would. God says. I would. Thou oh, work. This, this is so beautifully outlined. Amen. I would. Thou work cold. Now, God want us to be a cold church. Cold. That's right. What do you mean cold? His word rules here. His word is law here. His word have the utmost respect here. That's right. We have no respect for the rule of law from no other place that contradict the laws of God. That's right. No minister can come in and try to coerce our frozen minds. Amen. I want to be so solid until the frost of heaven Amen. build up on my sanctified soul until no type of wind or doctrine can sway me to the left or right. If you take an iceberg, I don't care how strong the wind blows, the iceberg stands. That we henceforth be no more children. Listen. Now in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Toss. Toss. To and fro. To and fro. How? And carried about. Carried about. With every wind. With every wind. Of doctrine. Of doctrine. Now, God wants you to be cold. cold. So when a doctrine blow among you, whether it's from your relatives, your family, your husband, your wife, from the job or from some liar that crept into the church. That's right. When that false doctrine blow among you, you're not tossed to, to and, fro. and fro. What do you mean to and fro? Mm -hmm. That false teaching don't make you unstable until now you don't know whether to believe it or stick to what God said. You're to, to and fro. You're back and forth. Carried about. And you carry it about with every wind. Of doctrine. Wind of doctrine. False doctrine blows. That's right. That's right. Why is false doctrine connected to wind? wind. Because Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. That's right. Which is the spirit of falsehood. That's right. And if he's the spirit of falsehood, he carry false teaching yes. all around his kingdom. Amen. Where is Satan's kingdom, Jennings? Right here on the earth. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. This is the devil's world. Amen. Did you hear what I said? That's right. This yes. is the devil's world. Oh, yeah. Let me give you a Bible. Mm -hmm. Second. Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter, chapter four. 4, and we'll start at verse 1. Paul, no, let's go right to the point, begin at verse 3. Second Corinthians Read quick, 4, son. verse 3. All right. But if our gospel be hid. If our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. It is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world. Who? The God of this world. Who? The God of this world. What did the God of this world do? Has blinded the minds of them which believe not. The Amen. God of this world have blind the human family. That's right. And they are blind, blind. too. Oh, yeah. Hey, Amen. Mothers are blind. Fathers are blind. Children are blind. Yeah. Bishops and preachers are blind. Oh, yeah. Church organizations around the world, blind. Blind. Or it take God and we're here by God's permission to open up your blinded eyes. That's right. Let's go back to Revelation. Back in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. Follow me. Verse 15. All right. I would. I would. Thou were cold. Thou were cold. Or hot. Now, cold, solid, firm, steadfast. Yeah. 
hot. hot. It is written, did not our heart burn, burn. while he spake with us? That's right. So, the heat of the gospel, the message bring about coldness to make you sound, stable, firm. Now you got the heat of the gospel, which is a purifying power. That's right. For it takes heat to kill bacteria. That's right. And the worst bacteria is sin. Oh, yeah. So here come, did not John says, one come after me, that's mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Fire. So God want us to be hot. hot. Hot is when you have the word of the Lord, which is the power of the word in you, and it consumes. Everything that is in us, of us, that's not like him. That's right. Are you listening? I would that were cold. So the Lord says, I want you to be cold or, or hot. Holy, or I want you to be steadfast. It is written, they continue. Mm -hmm. Steadfast. In the apostles' doctrine. In other words, they continue to be cold. Yeah. In the apostles' doctrine. They continue to be solid. In the apostles' doctrine, they continue to be one. Yeah. In the apostles' doctrine, That's right. Hallelujah to God. That's right. So we have the coldness now. Cold. We got to have the heat. Hot, hot. You got to have the heat brought to you, and you got to have the heat felt in you. That's right. That's right. God. Is a spirit. spirit. What kind of spirit is God? Holy. Holy. The nature of God is divine. That's right. But not only is the nature of God spirit, but also the expressions or the words of God is spirit. That's right. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you. Do you hear this? Now in the book of St. John chapter 6 and at verse 63. Jesus said. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Wait a minute. Amen. You better go at the verse up above that. Verse 62. Follow me. What and if ye shall see the son of man. If you see the son of man. Ascend up where he was before. Ascend up where he was before. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that revives. That's right. It is the spirit that quicken. It is the spirit that revive. It is the spirit that move. It is the spirit that function. The, uh -huh. the flesh profiteth nothing. Now. Mm. Amen. Amen. When the son of man, the son of God, Christ Jesus was walking here on earth. Mm -hmm. on, his own, on his own. Done nothing. Nothing. The body without the spirit is what? Dead. So on his own, he didn't heal the sick. That's right. On his own, he didn't raise Lazarus. That's right. And on his own, he didn't walk on water. That's right. Because the Bible says what? The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. Nothing. So therefore, it was the Spirit, the Father, Jehovah, Elohim, Yahweh, God, Lord Almighty, right. the Divine One that worked in the flesh and kept that body afloat so it could walk on water. That's right. That's the right. Son of God says, the, move the stone away. Mm -hmm. The spirit that was in him said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Are you listening? That's right. What did he say? It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that revives. The flesh profiteth nothing. That goes for the church. You can't do nothing on your own. No. You need the spirit to quicken you. That's right. Uh -huh. The words. Oh, read to God. Hallelujah. The words that I speak unto you. That I speak unto you. They are spirit. They are divine. And, and they, they are life. Why do you think all these folks coming, going down in the water from mm -hmm. all around the world? Amen. It's not Geno Jennings. No. I profiteth nothing. That's right. But it is the spirit the words. that quicken it. That's right. And they're not hearing the words of Mr. Jennings? No, no. I say like Jesus said. The words that I the speak words unto you. That I speak unto you. Unto you. They are spirit. They 
are spirit and, and they are life. Are life. Are life. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory That's take right. God. That's are right. Are you listening? That's right. Jesus told his apostles. That's right. It is not. That's right. You that speak. That speak it. it is not you that speak. It. That's right. But it is the voice mm -hmm. of my father speaketh that him. speaketh in you. In you. In so you. therefore, it isn't Pastor Jennings that's drawing a crowd. No way. No. That's it. it is Jehovah that's drawing the crowd. That's right. That's right. No man can do this work on his own. No way. It is God that has to make him cold. That's right. It is God that has to make him hot. Hot. It is only if he lukewarm, God will have a problem with. That's right. So then, listen. Now in Revelation 3 and verse 16. Listen. So then. So then. Because thou art lukewarm. Because you are lukewarm. Hold it. Amen. Let's oh. discuss this lukewarm, lukewarm business. That's right. When you're lukewarm, mm -hmm. the water ain't cold. Amen. And the water ain't hot. No. So you're in between. That's right. And when you're in between of cold and hot, yeah. you're in a comfort zone. That's right. Because most people don't like to sit in cold water. No. And most people don't like the water too hot. That's right. That's why they mix it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why you mix it. That's right. That's what right. do you mean, Pastor Jennings? Go ahead, Glory to God. Go ahead. You out there that are listening and watching, and many of you here feel as though I'm mean. Amen. That man don't got no love. He's cold as ice. Amen. He's mean like fire. Yes. Yeah. Because you have a lukewarm religion. That's right. And that lukewarm, you feel as though the Bible, you know even ice can burn you. Yes, it can. Yes, yeah. it can. Oh, yes. That's true. Even ice can burn you. That's true. So you don't want the coldness, coldness. of Scripture. No. You don't want the heat of Scripture. No. So you come along and want to mix scripture with theology to bring down the temperature of truth. That's right. Go ahead. So now you're lukewarm. lukewarm. You brag because you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, but yet you got a woman preacher in the pulpit. You're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You brag that you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, yet you believe there's no apostles now. You're lukewarm. That's right. You brag that you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, yet you believe there's three gods in heaven. Yeah. You're lukewarm. Mm -hmm. You have got comfortable in the atmosphere that calls you to do what you want, think what you want, act the way you want, and go wherever you please, because if you become too cold, that, that stiffens and limits your momentum. That's right. I don't care how wild you are. Yeah. This gospel will freeze you. <laughs> That's right. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yes, it will. You take go ahead. a piece of meat Amen. And freeze it? Yeah. That meat is under a new law. That's right. That's right. There's no flexibility. No, no shaking. Amen. The ice forms, it's like a girl. Yeah. It don't move. No. The scripture said, gunner up your lawns. That's right. By obeying the truth. That's right. So God. Have an argument, Amen. a gripe, mm -hmm. a complaint mm -hmm. with lukewarm church folk. I know thy works. You baptized, got the Holy Ghost, and got a cigarette hanging out your mouth, you lukewarm. lukewarm. You baptized and got the Holy Ghost, and you gay, you mm. lukewarm. Lukewarm. Very lukewarm. Very. That's Am right. I right, I said. That's right. 
That's right. baptized and had the Holy Ghost and believe no other color can come in your religion, you lukewarm. Yeah. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Amen. The Bible says what? So then because thou art lukewarm. And another thing that ice does naturally, it keeps bacteria out. That's right. It keeps germs out. So what is ice? It's a protection. That's right. That's why God says he prefers that you are cold. You have to cold. sit under the word of God so the climate in your life can change. Amen. Oh. Wonderful. To keep the bacteria out. That's right. Wonderful. What is your bacteria? False religion, false belief, sin, wickedness. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you listening? Amen. You need the word, the heat of the gospel mm -hmm. to consume it, burn it, do away with it. Away. And then once the heat consume you, right. then it come back, freeze you. That's right. That's right. So that way it holds all the flavor. Amen. Amen. Then you can taste the Lord. Mm. Go ahead. And see that, see he's, that he's good. good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Amen. Judge yourself. Mm. You that are here, you that are watching. Amen. Are you Luke lukewarm? Warm? Lukewarm. Many churches started out sound, strict, firm. They were cold oh. and they were hot. Yeah. But as the church began to flourish mm. and the offering pans turned to trash cans. Yeah. Am I right? That's right. And the preacher went from a Volkswagen to a Bentley. Yeah. And he went from a trailer home to a mansion. That's right. That's right. Off the backs of hard-working church people. Amen. Lukewarm, Lukewarm. trickled in. Yeah. So now the things that he used to preach against, he don't preach against no more out of fear of offending your wallet. That's right. So now, anything goes. Yeah. But what he's ignoring, as long as you lukewarm, you are exposed to bacteria. That's right. Parasites. That's right. Satan. Yeah. So Satan come among this lukewarm congregation and feast yeah. on the weak. Oh, yeah. You sit in church and deteriorate. Mm. You sit in church, I don't care how long you've been saved. You sit in church and deteriorate and die, and you can feel yourself dying a slow spiritual death. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. I hope you can get this. I would. Give chapter and verse for, again. Revelation 3 and at verse 15. I, I would, I prefer. I, I would that were cold. That you are cold. Or hot. Or hot. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you may have been cold, solid, firm, strong 20 years ago. Yeah. But did your climate change and now you're being thawed out? That's right. That's right. Now, any woman know, hmm. you know, you to thaw out certain meats, mm -hmm. you don't put it in hot water. That's true. Because the heat from the water can cook the meat. That's right. So most times the woman may put it in a lukewarm area, yeah. lukewarm water. Yeah. Well, in other words, she want to keep the temperature balanced. Mm -hmm. So when she throw out the meat, the meat don't spoil. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Religion have a lukewarm teaching. Yeah. They may talk about Jesus, but they don't talk about Jesus with fire. That's right. That's they true. got this weak Hollywood version of Jesus. Yeah. If you take note, whenever Hollywood got a fraud mm -hmm. acting like he's supposed to be Jesus. That's right. They always make the Hollywood version of Jesus timid. Yeah. Cowardly. Yeah. Weak. That's right. Weak. Come out, my son. <laughs> Amen. Supposed to be Jesus casting out devils? Yeah. I command thee. I, I command thee. That's right. He always got his wrist broke. That's the way they have him. 
I command thee, come out, my son, come out. That's right. Hold thine peace. Peace be still. That's right. Look at every picture they try to paint that's supposed to be Jesus. Always looking feminine. That's right. Fairyish. That's right. Timid, weak. Weak. Jesus was militant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Turned over tables. Amen. Beat you out the temple. Out the temple. That's right. Called you hypocrites and heathens and liars. Yes, yes he did. Was there nothing weak about him? No, no. A lukewarm pastor, Luke a lukewarm leader creates a lukewarm congregation. That's right. You find people going to church, men with shorts, yeah. T-shirts, mm -hmm. women going with halters, That's right. short pants, half naked, up on the choir, talking about they dressing casual, with just with hot pants on, and tell you, you know, God ain't looking at you outwardly, looking at all this, this amusement. It's a carnival. That's right. And when you sit in this lukewarmness for years, it becomes normal to you. Yeah. You take a family that's been raised in filth and dirt. When they go to somebody's house that's clean, they think something wrong with the house. That's right. That's there ain't right. nothing wrong with that clean family. You just dirty. Amen. So folks that sit in lukewarm churches, yeah. you think something wrong with me. That's why you said that man ain't got no love. Amen. That man ain't got no mercy. Mm -hmm. That man, he, he's, he's just beside himself. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with me. That's right. You just dirty and lukewarm. lukewarm. We got a clean message. That's right. That clean up our dirty people. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Listen. So then, because thou art lukewarm. Because you're lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. And you're not cold, you're not sound, you're not hot, you're not filled with God. You don't want the word of God. So what will God do to you? I will spew thee out of my mouth. I'm gonna send you to hell. That's it. That's right. Notice the spewing out the mouth represent the rejection of that person. That's right. But wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. When is God going to actually spew you out of the mouth? In the book. Spewing out of the mouth represents things being said. That's right. So let's see what God going to say. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 7 and at verse 23. You see how the scriptures just link together? Amen. Listen. Matthew 7 and verse 23. Says what? And then will I profess unto them. This is where, this is, this is spewing you out. Spewing you out. They will not profess unto them. I never knew you. I don't know you. Depart from me. Get away from me. He that work iniquity. That's spewing you out. Spewing you out of the mouth. Are you listening? That's right. All lukewarm people in the world. Amen. Your religion don't mean nothing. That's right. When you're lukewarm, the Lord of heaven and earth. Will spew thee out of my mouth. Shall spew you out of his mouth. He said, first in the church apostles, mm -hmm. your raggedy Ann and Andy preacher say it ain't none. God <laughs> gonna spew you, out. spew you out. God said, I suffer not a woman that teach nor the use of authority of the man but the learning and silence. Mm -hmm. You'll preach your wife if the assistant pastor. Mm -hmm. He got female evangelists. He got female bishops. God gonna spew you out. Right. The Bible said if a woman pray or prophesy with the head uncovered, she is on her head. And the Bible said the head of every woman is the man. And the Bible says for this cause of the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. The preacher said you ain't got to cover your head. God gonna spew you out. That's right. That's right. And I will. God said. I will. I will. Spew thee out of my mouth. I will spew you out of my mouth. And let's see how he's going to do it. Go back to Matthew. Back in Matthew 7 and verse 23. That's what? And then will I profess unto them. God I say, I'm going to profess. This is after you profess something to me. Many will say to me in that day. Many will say to me in that day. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. I will not prophesy in thy name. Oh, we prophesied in thy name. And in thy name, and in thy cast, name out we cast out devils. And in thy and name, thy many name. wonderful oh, works. Oh, we built organizations. We built churches. We built schools. We got a Christian cruise and allowed our women to get on the boat in bikinis. That's 
right. and play gospel music. We smoked reefer. We drank wine. We partied on the boat in Jesus' name. In thy name. In thy name. Did all this in Jesus' name. That's right. That's right. We went to a Christian comedy club. Jesus' name. Amen. In thy name. Anybody can hide under the name Jesus and use it. That's right. There's a correct way to use it. There's an incorrect way to use it. That's and right. And this is why church has become such a dump site of lukewarm garbage. Amen. 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 How did you get so bad? That a comedian can come in church and have a Christian comedy club. That's right. Invite a comedian, a stooge. That's right. In church. A, a joker. A joker. Amen. A jester. That's right. How did you get so bad that you can invite a rapper? Amen. To be the spokesperson for your church. How did you get so bad yeah. where you preachers? One preacher, in fact, was Bishop Huey Rogers. Mm -hmm. One of the old false prophets of Bible way. Amen. Brought a wrestling ring in church. My Lord, my Lord. Then he got dressed up in a Superman costume. Mm. In church. One man tied a harness onto himself, floating up in the middle of the air. That's right. In church. In the church. What's the matter with these men? Amen. Lukewarm. Lukewarm. The word has become insignificant in church, and when you are lukewarm, you're weak. That's right. Did you hear what I said? That's right. When you are lukewarm, yeah. You are weak. weak. And a lukewarm man and a lukewarm woman cannot take a hot or solid cold message. No. If it's too cold, they say, that's not loving. Not love. <laughs> that's right. That's not caring. If it's too hot, huh, he always preached with anger. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If it's lukewarm, they say, <laughs> That's right. That feels so cozy. Feels so good. Why? Because nothing about your wickedness is being exposed. That's right. And nothing about your wickedness is being touched. That's right. And this is the way church has become. They ignore the contents of the book that speak against all of our wickedness. Oh, yeah. So they want a church that don't touch no wickedness. That's right. That's a lukewarm That's church. Luke lukewarm. Go back to Revelation quickly. Back in Revelation 3 and verse 15. All right. I know thy works. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold You're not nor hot. Cold. You're not hot. I would thou art cold or hot. God say, I want you to be cold or hot. So then, so because then, thou art lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You're in the middle. And neither cold nor hot. You're not cold or hot. I will spew thee Lord out of my mouth. God, I'm going to reject you. That's right. Now let's go back to Ephesians. Back Everybody all right? Amen. Listen, let's get dressed up now. Back in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. All right. Finally, my brethren. Finally, church. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, Amen. God wants us to be strong. In order for that to take place, we've got to be around strong teaching. Yeah. Weak teaching makes a weak person. That's right. I don't care who you are. That's in right. boxing, you have the speed bag and you have the big bag. Mm-hmm. The speed bag is that little bag you see hanging like from a ceiling. Yeah. They work on that to build up your speed, your momentum. Yeah. The body bag is to build up your strength in hitting. That's right. The job of your trainer is for the trainer to teach you how to utilize both. Yeah. Speed and force. That's right. Now, my job is to teach you how to use Old Testament and New Testament. Mm -hmm. They teach you how to use both and bring them together to bring the force of the scriptures. That's right. Are you getting me? Amen. Before you look for others to be strong, mm -hmm. first, be strong within self. Right. Being strong is not determined by the amount of scriptures you quote. No. <clears throat> Let me break this down much clearer. A lot of folks think they're strong because they were. Have you ever met people? who project this spiritual strong image 
Mm -hmm. And they think the way you show strength is just walking around quoting scriptures all day. Amen. How you doing, sister? Well, I'm telling you, uh, 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 the, the Lord told David, and David got the stone. I just asked you, how you doing? That's right. <laughs> Talk to a brother. Brother. Hey, brother, it's good to see you. Well, you know, Pastor Jennings, the Bible said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out farm and boy, and I was one of those creatures that God created, so I just had to be there because God made me for his glory. <laughs> Look, man. I just asked you how, you know, you're doing. That's right. Car break down. <laughs> you pull over. Brother up under his hood. Brother, and I can give you a hand. The Bible said, look like every man on his own thing, on the things of others. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Amen. So, this is people, ignorant version. Ignorant version. Notice what I said. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is people's ignorant version. <laughs> of being strong, yeah. outrageous scriptural quotation. Mm -hmm. They think having their mind on the Lord is just thinking of scriptures all day. All day. Let's be real. That's right. It ain't nobody no. got scriptures in their head all day. Not all day. No way. You know why? Because the Lord said. That's right. He don't strive with man oh, always, yes. seeing but flesh. you but flesh. But flesh. That's, right. That's when we become overzealous. 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 Overrighteous. That's right. <clears throat> You're trying to do more than what the Lord even told you to do. Amen. You're trying to do things to impress the Lord. You can't impress him. <laughs> no. All you can do is obey him. That's all. That's all. Some say, well, Pastor Jennings, I've been praying for the Lord to bless me with a car. I told the Lord, you bless me with a car, I never miss church. And then when you get the car, you ride by the church. <laughs> That's right. Overzealousness. Overzealous. It's trying to keep up with someone else because you idolize them so much, too much, until you want to be so much like them, you lose your own identity. That's right. The only one you should want to be like is Christ. Amen. Because he's your only measuring stick for perfection. Yeah. Any brother or any sister you want to be like, wrong. Wrong. The one you want to be like, that's flesh, still got flaws. That's right. They still got struggles, they just don't tell you. That's right. They may try to show this radiant energy of strength all the time, but the truth is they are not strong all the time. Amen. All the time. Are you listening? That's right. That's right. What of God says what? Finally, my brethren. Finally, be, my brethren. Be, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in, in the, the Lord, Lord. In the Lord. That's not going around excessively quoting scriptures. That's not giving three-hour testimonies. That's right. Because you don't know how to sit down. Amen. Your strength is not determined how many times you speak in tongue a day. No. And your strength not determined how long you shake. That's right. Sometimes you can meet people every time you see them. <laughs> you just talk to them. They, they got some anointing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's right. You ever meet people like that? Yeah. You know, you see them, you see them in the market. Hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, hey Lord. <laughs> Look, I just asked you, how you doing? Amen. Your car break down, you know, you're on the side of the road. Oh, Chief, <laughs> Chief. What do your car breaking down and you shaking God in common? Amen. You shaking ain't going to fix your car. No. And the spirit you got ain't going to give your battery a jump. No, it won't. No, it you won't. still need triple A. That's right. You still need a tow truck. That's true. Because the Lord ain't hauling your car. No. Do you get the old man? Amen. Come off your high, arrogant horse. Yeah. And come down to reality like the Bible requires. That's right. That's right. Serving God is not 
up on a mountain at all times. No way. No way. You're going to be put in the valley and God will give the devil permission to put you there. That's right. The purpose of you being placed there, how do you know whether God can pick you up if you've never been down there? That's right. How are you going to know? How you going to know? You can read it. Yeah. Reading is good, but you got to have some experience. That's right. The prophet said, rejoice not, my enemies. Enemy. When I fall, shall arise. I shall rise. That's right. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall, the Lord shall be my everlasting light. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. When the book says rejoice not my enemies, mm -hmm. some of those enemies will be trash people. True. Because there are some good for nothing trash people. Amen. Who don't want to see you succeed. Yeah. I mean, some of these folk baptized. Baptized. And claim they got the Holy Ghost. That's right. They forgot about the scripture that says rejoice with them that do rejoice. Mourn with them mourn. that do mourn. That's right. That's right. You should never rejoice, rejoice. at the downfall no way. of no brother. No. And no sister. That's right. You ain't got the right to tell somebody, oh, you should overcome that like me. They ain't got to overcome nothing like you. Amen. Wait for your change to come. That's right. That's right. Don't you profess nothing until God make it happen. That's right. Don't claim nothing. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Take off. Go ahead. Yeah. Amen. Don't claim nothing. Go ahead, brother. The Bible ain't never said claim it. No. The Bible don't teach that. No, no. Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord right. shall renew their strength, shall mount up. Oh, go. Yes, sir. Shall mount up on the wings of an eagle. That's right. Shall run. Not be weary. Go and take off. And not be weary. That's right. Shall walk. And not faint. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Shall walk and not faint. Not faint. The Bible have never said Go ahead. claim something. No. That claim teaching is blasphemy. That's right. Why would you claim healing when you know you're sick? That's right. Why would you claim to be up when you know you die? Amen. Just wait. Wait. Moses said, stand still. Stand still. That's Hurry right. Up. That's Hurry right. Up. Hurry up. That's right. Don't go forward. Don't go backward. Stand, stand still. still. Stand still. Oh. Huh? Go ahead. Stand still. Go ahead. And see. Don't go to the left. Yes. Don't go to the right. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still and see. And, and see. The salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The salvation of the Lord. Of the Lord. Wonderful. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. Mm. This touching claim, touching claim. Touching is deception. Yes, it is. The Bible never said claim your healing. No. The Bible said believe. Believe it. I can claim I'm free. Listen, I can go to jail. Sitting behind bars. Yeah. And claim I'm out. <laughs> That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. I sit behind bars and say, I'm not going to claim these walls. <laughs> I don't have to. They claim me. That's right. Now do you understand? Amen. This is artificial teaching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's artificial intelligence. That's right. The intelligence of God says that they that wait, wait upon the Lord, upon the Lord mm -hmm. shove a new day strip. Not touch and claim. No. Claim it and it's yours. No, You're no. going around touching other people's houses. That's right. Claim it and it's yours. That's covetous. Come on. 
That's right. They live there. What you claiming they asked for? Amen. Touching other people's car. That's mine. No, it ain't. They got the keys. They driving. They driving. It's theirs. That's right. Oh, you listen to the old man. That's right. I want to educate you good today. Finally, my brethren. Glory, give chapter and verse again. Still in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong. In the Lord. Be strong where? In the Lord. A lot of us are strong in everything else. True. Mathematics, science, history, That's astrology, true. architect, yeah. mechanics, yeah. electronics. That's right. Computer savvy. Mm -hmm. We're strong in everything else. Strong relationship That's right. with heaven knows what. Amen. But when it comes to God, God. Mm. we lack that strength. That's right. I want to reconnect the entire human family back to God. Yes. Amen. Because what have interfered with our relationship with God is this life. Yeah. In fact, the Bible teaches us right. the lust of other things, other things entering in. have entered in. Choked the word. It choked it. Choked it. Listen. Now in the book of St. Mark chapter 4 and at verse 19. And the cares of this world. Give chapter and verse again. St. Mark chapter 4, we're at verse 19. The cares of this world. Of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. What did the Bible call riches? The deceitfulness of riches. Amen. It is not a sin to be rich. That's right. The sin is when rich possess you. Yeah. Because it was God that made Solomon rich. That's right. And Solomon didn't ask for it. Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom, how to lead his people. Right. But then it was the Lord that not only gave him wisdom, but blessed him naturally along with his wisdom. That's right. God won't make everybody rich. No. Because God don't want to send everybody to hell. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Some people can't handle five dollars. God forbid if mama or father die and had a little bit of money or a house, or a cow, or a mule, or a dog, you got family members fighting each other. Right, that's true. Close family. That's right. But materialism yeah. has interfered with the closeness. Amen. Materialism has interfered with your relationship with God. Yeah. And these false prophets on television and internet who are these prosperity hustler devils Amen. are getting you more focused on earthly things yeah. And yet my job is getting you focused on heavenly things. That's right. In fact, the book says, seek ye first Earth. the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Unto you. Listen. Still in Mark 4 and verse 19. Says what? And the cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness, the tricks that riches bring. And the lust of other the things. The lust of other things. What does, wait a minute. The lust of other things come in a whole wide range of territory. Oh, that's right. What does it do to us after we get the word in us? Entering in, choke the word. Choke the word. It does what to us? Choke the word. And as the result of the word being choked in, that means the things you were taught. Taught, that's right. You know, when you choke a person, they don't function like they should. That's right. That's right. So if the word is being choked sure. in you by your involvement in things, mm -hmm. you will not function in a divine manner that God purposed. That's right. Are you being choked today? Amen. By who and by what yeah. and from where? Yeah. That's right. Are you being choked? Do you feel yourself suffocating spiritually? That's right. Do you find yourself unable to function in a capacity in the role that the scripture requires because of your dealings with some things? Amen. Other things. Choke is a stronghold. That's right. Because you can choke a person out. Yeah. Eventually, they're unconscious. That's right. Until they don't even remember to choke. That's true. Are oh, you listening to me? And the lust of other things, the lust of other things in, enter in. Choke the word. Chokes the message out of you. And, and as a result, you become unfruitful. Amen. Amen. If the word is choked out and you became unfruitful, unfruitful, unfruitful means you don't materialize. 
That's right. You don't produce. That's right. You don't grow. Yeah. You don't develop. Yeah. You don't get higher in God. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. This is why we tell you to come out the false churches. I don't care because you baptized and got the Holy Ghost. If the church you in choking you, you still will go to hell even if you got the new birth. That's right. Why is that, Pastor Jennings? After I repented of my sins mm -hmm. and baptized in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and really do have the Holy Ghost, that's not enough. It's not enough. Give me the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. You just got the principles. Got the principles. You don't take a plant and put it in the ground and that's it. That's right. You go to Lowe's or Home Depot, get a plant, take it out the pot, break up the roots, dig a hole, put it in the ground and that's it. That's it. You got to water it. Oh, yeah. You got to look at it and maintain and watch it. That's right. Take care of it. That's right. In other words, you got to know where to take the nurture that plant so it can grow like it's supposed to. Oh, yeah. It is written, those plants that my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. That's right. Listen. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 1. You baptized, got the Holy Ghost. You just got the introduction to the faith. That's you just it. got the principles. That's right. Listen at this. Give chapter and verse again. Hebrews chapter 6 and at the first verse. Says what? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. You can't leave what you haven't obtained. You first got to obtain it. Right. After you repent of your sins and receive the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ to get your sins washed away, receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, <clears throat> mm -hmm. then you're born again. Right. You got the principles. You mm -hmm. got the introduction to the faith. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said, leave it. What leave do you mean? It. Once I receive it, now I got some more teaching I need. That's right. I don't just stay there at that point. Let us go on. Let us go on. Unto perfection. Unto completion. That's what? it. Not laying Not again. Laying again the foundation, the foundation, of, foundation of, repentance. of repentance. From dead works. In other words, don't go back to the dead works that you God delivered you from. That's right. Grow. That's right. Let How us. can I grow if I don't have a preacher driving the tractor of the scriptures to plow the land Go of ahead. my heart? That's right. Go ahead. God called the preacher a husband man. Husband man. Husbandry is farming. That's right. And the seed is the word. the word. I'm driving the tractor of the scriptures. Amen. So I can plow your heart and drop the seed of the word there. Preacher, brother. Preach it. After we plant the word in you, I'm coming back checking. That's right. One plant and another water. That's right. But God give the increase. Amen. If I'm planting, these ministers got the water. Got the water. We just can't have plants just sitting. That's right. These ministers got a plant. They got the water, the water and then wait for God, God give the to increase. give the increase. That's right. That's right. When that happens, Go ahead. Go ahead. you will see a field of a growing church. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Yeah, the church will grow. Amen. Everywhere we travel around the world, they're being planted oh, yeah. and they're being watered. And we must bear witness. That's right. God has given the increase. increase. When that happened, rest assure you, it's being done right and it's being done scripturally. That's right. That's why when I travel, I'm checking on the plants that's already in the church. Yeah. And I'm checking and I'm looking for new plants mm. to plant in the church. That's right. I'm looking over the field yeah. and make sure nobody got to, is withering in. Trying up. Yeah. That's why sometimes they come and sit and talk to me. Right. I'm, in, I'm inspecting the plant and, and may see if the leaves are all green. Yeah. And if the leaves are not green, I have to go to the scripture yeah. and show them what antidote to use yeah. so they can go back to the way they were, right. fresh, and green, fresh and green, in the eyes of God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Do you understand? Wonderful. As ministers, you are crop keepers. Yeah. Amen. Ministers are crop keepers. That's right. They are to maintain the crop. That's right. The crops. Crop. And when false prophets come like locusts, yeah. you got to protect the crop by spraying scripture. That's right. 
our insecticide Amen. is scripture. Amen. That protects the plants. That's it. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We use scripture. Amen. That's our insecticide. Insecticide. To get the bugs off. That's right. Are you getting what? And keep the bugs off. Keep them off. Huh? Amen. Amen. What did he say, Will? Therefore, leaving the principles of Glory the doctrine of Christ. Leaving? Leaving the, the principles of the right, doctrine of Christ. baptized and got the Holy Ghost. That's good. That's good. But they ain't enough. No. Let us go on. Give me Acts 2.42. Acts chapter 2 and at verse 42. Listen. And they continued steadfast. Wait a minute. This is after. After. You done repented of your sins, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, after. have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Now the book says they continued they kept steadfastly. It up. They kept up the teaching of Jesus. That's right. That's what that means. That's right. They kept up the teaching of Jesus, not integrating anything else, not making reference to anything else, not relying on anything else other than what Jesus and the prophets said. That's right. Listen. And they continued steadfastly. Where? In the apostles' doctrine. What was they doing? And fellowship. We're going from state to state, country to country. Mm -hmm. Fellowship. Fellowship. I don't want a fellowship with no false prophet. No. Only thing I want a false prophet to do is repent of his sins, be baptized in the name right. of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Ghost, and walk in the truth, and get rid of all this falsehood. That's it. Amen. I, I don't want a fellowship with no one that believe a lie. No. You got it, because that lie may try to come in the church, and I'm always sitting with my can of insecticide That's watching right. you. That's right. Always. 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 It, it, it doesn't matter. When, when, I, when I let a minister have something to say, I'm <laughs> listening. You're listening. That's Seeing true. do I got to come behind him That's right. and start spraying scripture. <laughs> I'm listening. Yeah. I'm listening, I said. That's right. I'm watching and listening. Yes, you are. Yeah. Watching. That's right. See where that bug gonna go. You, you get what I'm talking. That's right. My job is protect the crop. That's right. Protect the church. Amen. Because there's too many pulpit locusts yeah. that don't consume the fruit of the field. Yeah. And they'll rob you blind yes, and will. you still remain loyal right to hell. That's right. What did he say? And they continued steadfastly. What? In the apostles' doctrine. In what doctrine? In the apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine is the doctrine of God. The doctrine of God is the doctrine of Jesus Christ that he brought the apostles through and by the Holy Ghost. That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Ephesians. Everybody all right? Back in Ephesians. Follow me now. Back in Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Listen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the be Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. What should we do, Williams? Put on the whole armor of God. Wait a minute. To you overzealous people who just come in, you just get baptized, and now you want to go out and try to fight everybody. <laughs> I want to fight everybody like Pastor Jennings. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Amen. Amen. Nobody goes out to battle with a gun and draws. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> I want to make it so plain you got to get it. That's right. It ain't no man going out with a gun and draws. Amen. He gonna, you're not going to do that. No. When the Air Force and the paratroopers come out to play, mm -hmm. they don't have a parachute and underwear. No. And a gun. <laughs> no, no. They have on their whole armor. The whole armor. That's right. If the book require put on the whole armor of why God, why are we running before we're properly dressed? That's true. That's right. And how can you be properly dressed without a teacher That's right. to let you know what you need for this battle? Amen. Well, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. A battle is a battle. You know, you're not wise. All battles are not the same. No way. No way. In different battles, it bring about variations of injury. Yeah. Some of your experience, you have experienced more mental damage mm -hmm. than physical. Yeah. In some experiences, you have experienced more emotional trauma yeah. than physical. That's right. Because it's a trickling effect. If I'm emotionally traumatized mm -hmm. and if I'm mentally traumatized, mm -hmm. my body going to react. Oh, yeah. Until it spreads to my spirit. That's right. And then my mind, heart, heart. body, and spirit is going to be held hostage until I won't be able to function freely in God like I want to. That's right. 
So sometimes, as I said earlier, for me to function fully like I want, I may have to do like God told Abraham. Yeah. Get out from among my kindred. Kindred, that's right. Sometimes you have to disassociate yourself, even if it's from flesh and blood. Yeah. If flesh and blood is interfering yeah. with my relationship with God, that's right. Then I must evaluate. Yeah. What's more important to me? More important. My relation to you as a brother or a sister, or my eternal destiny between God and myself. That's right. When you prioritize, brothers and sisters, you will conclude that your relationship with God is more important always than your relationship with anybody on the planet. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. When you put that in right perspective, you will find the burdens of your thoughts lifted, yeah. the weight on your heart removed, oh, and the hindrance of your physical performance and serving God done away with. That's right. Listen. Put on the whole armor of God and that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against what? Against the wiles of the devil. The devil is a wild, wild. thing. Amen. When a thing is wild, it's unpredictable. Wild. That's right. Coming up in the hood fighting some fellas, they was wild swingers. Yeah. Unpredictable. I mean, it gets wild. They call them windmill fighting. Amen. Just, just swinging all kind of ways. That's right. Satan is a wild thing. Wild. And these dumb preachers, and some of them may be your pastor, your father, your <laughs> husband, your grandpappy, your Grand uncle. Pappy. How many here heard preachers in churches get up and tell the congregation the devil don't have no power? Raise oh. your hand. <laughs> All of you been lied to. That's right. If the devil don't have no power, why are you praying? Amen. Devil ain't got no power. Why you need deliverance from him so bad? <laughs> Amen. Devil don't have no power. Why are you fasting? No power. The devil don't have no power. Why even come to church? That's right. If the devil ain't got no power, I'm leaving. Amen. I ain't coming back to second service. Nope. I'm not. I'm just going to catch an early flight back home. Back home. And I ain't going to see you no more. <laughs> Why, Pastor Jennings? Devil ain't got no power. That's right. If the devil don't have no power, why you got all these stupid thoughts in your head? If the devil ain't got no power, why is it you trying to rationalize knowing you didn't blaspheme God, but the devil convinced you you said something that you didn't say? Go ahead, man. That's true. If the devil ain't got no power, how can he turn a straight man into a homosexual by whispering in his vision of the night? That's right. And make a little boy wake up and tell his parents, uh, I, 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 I. I can be gay. Mm. Son, where you got that from? You got that from school? No. I, I heard it in my head at night. I heard it in my head. Wow. Mm. I heard it in my head, mommy. Wow. That's something. The devil know, first I got to change a mind. That's right. And when I change a mind, I can change a body. That's right. But you first got to change the pattern of thinking. Yeah. I hope you can get this, brothers and sisters. Amen. Listen. Put on the whole armor of God. We'll put on God's armor. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right, the wiles of the devil. The devil present us with a bunch of wild things, whether on social media, because social media is killing our young generation. Yeah. Our young generation can't even hold a conversation with Harley without walking. Walking around your house with these dumb earphones in your head. Your mother and father got to call you about five times and you can't hear nothing. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? That's right. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the, the wiles devil. The wiles of the devil are in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, on the job, and in church. In the church. Mm -hmm. That's, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But what? But against principalities. <clears throat> against 
principalities and against powers, powers against the rulers of the, the rulers darkness of, of this the world. Darkness of this world. Against and that's what we're wrestling with. Yeah. Against spiritual wickedness where? In high places. Look at the governments of the world. Look at the preachers who think they're God. Yeah. <clears throat> Members get so caught up in their preacher, they want to carry him around in a big chair like he's a pharaoh. <laughs> that's right. You remember they did Ellie Long like that? Yeah. Wasn't for long after that, Eddie Long died. Yeah. There's an organization called the House of Prayer for All People, Daddy Grace. Mm -hmm. That's the way they do, they, they bishops. <clears throat> Lord. They put them on a big old customized throne mm. with two long bars on the side. My Lord. And the men hoist the bishop up in the air mm. like he's a pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He got his throne. Amen. He got his reward right his here. Reward. That's right. I wish somebody would <laughs> honor me by getting the chair and horsing me up in the air. You I mess trying to throw you out the church. <laughs> Amen. I don't need no throne. No. Thrones are for kings. That's right. I'm just a servant. That's right. Of a king. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. What is it? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Take it means submit. To the getting dress. That's it. All right. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Uh -huh. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore. Wait a minute. Amen. How many here feel as though they've done everything to stand? Stand. Raise your hand. I mean done everything to stand for God. Yeah. Oh, nobody feel like you've done everything. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Not everything. Why you ain't got your hand up, Wiz? Not everything, Pastor. <laughs> And fellas, have you done everything? No, not everything. All right. Amen. I'm watching you. Amen. What did he say? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Then. And having done all to after stand. After you've done all to stand. Stand therefore. The advice is keep it up. That's right. Now let's get dressed. Having your loins girt about with truth. Hold it. We want to strip this down and focus on the language of Scripture, That's it. the expressions of Scripture. That's right. Having your loins girdled about. With truth. A girdle is to contain that, to eliminate momentum. That's right. When you have your loins girdled about with truth, one Scripture says, girdle up the loins of your mind. Another Scripture says, don't be so soon shaken in mind. In mind. When your loins is girdled about with truth, it contains Movement. You know, when you got an unstable mind, I don't trust an unstable person. No way. It's like starting a business. Would you have an unstable employee banking company money? No way. No. no. You ask him, did you go buy the bank? Yes. You didn't yes. ask the right question. Amen. So you ask him, did he go buy the bank? <laughs> you can ride by it. You went by it. Mm. No. Did you go in it and put it away? That's did you right. bank the money? That's right. So when you lack stability, Double. you'll be in and out of church. Mm -hmm. You'll hear the truth of God. Double. Well, you know what? I need to be baptized. Then when it come time, no, I ain't going to do it. Hmm. Oh, you know, I do it. That man message, it, it pricked my heart. Amen. No, I ain't going to do it. That's right. You know, I'm going to get myself right and throw away all these pants and get rid of all this fake hair. Hmm. Oh, no, I ain't going to do it. Right. All it takes is some friends to call you. That's Betty, right. you coming out? Oh, no, you know, that Gino Jennings is telling him going to see him. Come on, Betty, look. Well, okay, 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 look. Look, let me go see Gino Jennings, and then I'll see you later on that day. Amen. You unstable. Unstable. The Bible says, I, now, listen. This is what will happen. And I want everyone to listen. You that are watching around the world and you that are here. Right. I want Genesis mm -hmm. chapter 49. 49. And the first verse. Genesis. I want to show you Jacob's eldest son. Right. His name was Reuben. That's right. But Jacob said a very important thing about Reuben. Mm -hmm. And he told the truth about him. That's right. He complimented him first, mm -hmm. but he also saw a dangerous flaw in Reuben. Listen. Genesis chapter 49, we're starting at verse 1. All right. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together. That I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Yes. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben. Reuben. Thou art my firstborn. You are 
My firstborn, you're my eldest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My might. You're my might. And the beginning you of my strength. You are the beginning of my strength. The, the excellency of dignity. You see him complimenting them? The excellency of dignity. And the excellency, and the of, excellency power. of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Unstable. How bad was Reuben's instability? Unstable as water. And as a result? Thou shalt not excel. You ain't going nowhere. Amen. You have people the same way. That's right. Unstable. They can be steadfast mm -hmm. and everything natural, That's fleshy, right. carnal. That's right. But when it comes to God, unstable is water. Not ready. Not ready. Pastor Dennis, I come to church when you come in town. <laughs> I'm not your God. That's right. If I was your God, I'd destroy you for not coming. <laughs> Amen. You're unstable. Unstable. Unstable is water, and as a result, the Bible says. Thou shalt not excel. And if the greatest excelling that can happen to us is be saved when the Lord come. Mm. But if you unstable, imagine the Lord come for you in the midst of your instability. That's right. Now let me bring it more closer. That's right. If we're unstable, not even God can count on us. That's right. Did you hear me? That's right. If you're unstable, not even God can count on you. In James chapter 1, we're starting at verse 6. Says. But at right, verse 5. All right. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Yes. That giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. What is it? And it shall be given him. Uh -huh. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Doing what? Driven with the wind. Driven with the wind. And tossed. Tossed. For let not that man think. Don't even let that man think. That he shall receive anything of the Lord. Don't even think. Think it. That's right. That's right. Don't even think it. Let that God gonna give you anything. Anything of the Lord. When you unstable like water. A double-minded man. A double-minded man is unstable. How bad, William? In all his ways. All his ways. All his ways. In church. Out of church. False prophecy. Sometime up. Time, time, down, time, <laughs> down, level with the ground. Ain't no Bible say that. You ain't level with no ground, you old liar. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Unstable as water. Unstable as water. And what did James say? A double-minded man is unstable. Are you a double-minded person today? Unstable. You used to believe in one God. Mm. Someone came along and told you it's three or two. Amen. You used to believe in the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone told you you ain't got to be baptized? Yeah. You used to didn't sit under woman preachers. Now someone got you sitting under Mother Grethel? That's right. Double-minded. You used to didn't believe flesh and blood is in heaven. Now mm -hmm. some queer come along and tell you it's up there, and you believe it? Believe it. Double-minded. You see right in the Bible, first in the church apostles. Yeah. Now you walk around, it ain't none. It ain't none. Double-minded. Unstable. You read the scriptures, Jesus on the right hand of God, and let you know that right hand is power, right hand is majesty, right hand authority, and now you think that Jesus is standing on the right hand of somebody else? That's Two right. of them. Two of them. Double-minded. Hey, you received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Amen. Now somebody come along and told you you ain't got to speak. Now you denounce what happened to you. That's right. Double-minded. Amen. The Holy Ghost says what? A double-minded man is unstable. And how much? In all his ways. Imagine having a double-minded overseer. Mm. Then you cannot trust nothing that devil preach. Confidence. Because his double-mindedness spirit is going to spread all among that congregation. That's right. And the Bible says like people, like, this. like priests. Confidence. If the blind leave the blind, they're both Fall into the ditch. That's right. 
Give me the book of Proverbs. In Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 19. Proverbs 29, 25, 25 19 says. Confidence. Confidence. In an unfaithful man. Confidence in an unfaithful man. In time of trouble. In time of trouble. Is like a broken tooth. It's like a broken tooth. And a foot. And a foot. Out of joint. Out of joint. That's right. Amen. Why is that? Why is that? Let's go back to the hood. Mm -hmm. When you was in the hood, your boys roll with you. I got your back. Yeah. And if two guys jump you, the guys that's with you, they're going to mix it up with you. That's right. Or the old head's going to stand around and say, all right, that's where the term fair one come in at. Yeah. The old head stood around and said, all right, this is going to be a fair one. Mm -hmm. Ain't no one pulling out no blades, no nothing. We're going to make sure y'all keep everything intact. Toe to toe. Bop, 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 Just going at it. Amen. But if you like a broken tooth. Broken tooth. Or a foot out of joint. Yeah. The moment you someone back you should have, you got that foot out of joint. Yeah. I can't help you. That's right. That's the way we are when it comes to standing for the word. That's right. We got a broken tooth, broken meaning tooth. we won't speak up. Yeah. Mm. Amen. We got a foot out of joint. Out of that means we won't walk according. Wow. Mm. We won't speak up. Mm. And we won't walk according. Amen. False teaching affect our mouth. We won't stand up for the word. Yeah. False teaching Change our steps because a good man's steps is ordered by the Lord. By the Lord. Are you getting this? Amen. Go back to where you were. Back Come in, on, Williams. Back in James 1 and verse 8. Follow me. A double-minded man is unstable. And how much? In all his ways. Now, when you got a sound mind, your husband can't change it. That's right. When you're walking with God, your wife can't change it. That's right. When you're walking with God, money won't change it. Yeah. Your new house, your new car won't change it. Your new suit of clothing won't change you, brother. That's right. When you're sound, you just thank God for your suit and you come wish up God just like you got jeans on. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. When you come with your new suit, you get on your knees and pray just like you got overalls. Yeah. You ain't worrying about how dirty your knees got. Amen. You ain't down there praying and checking your knees at the same time. No. Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you ain't doing that. No, no. Come on, son. Back in Ephesians 6 and verse 14. Follow me. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Yes. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Hold it. Amen. Breastplate means just chest protection. That's right. What is it about our chest that need protected? Heart. Your heart. The heart. The breastplate of righteousness. righteousness. The word protects your heart. That's right. You should have stable emotions. Mm -hmm. If your emotions are unstable, you can be too close to someone who can co coerce you to depart from the faith of Jesus Christ. Their heart is divided. The Bible says. In, in Hosea chapter 10 and verse 2. Hosea 10 and 2 says. Their heart, their heart is, divided. is divided. Divided. Now, mm -hmm. no one should be able to separate your heart, your heart, and they have most of it, and That's God right. have a little bit of it. That's right. When that happens, right. you're going to try to please them first. Yeah. If you please God at all. Amen. Amen. That's why I often say it ain't no woman or no man. No man should love a woman with all his heart. All his heart. No, man <laughs> should, no woman should love a man with all her heart. The only one deserves all your heart is God. You're supposed to love that man from the heart and love that woman from the heart. But only the Lord, your creator, is yeah. supposed to possess all, all your heart. All your heart. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Breastplate of righteousness. Of righteousness. Of righteousness. The term righteousness means doing right. Right. So you want your emotions to be right mm -hmm. towards him or her. That's Don't right. ever let a wicked person bring you down to their dog-like mentality. Amen. Because Amen. the moment they do, oh, I thought you saved. Yes, they will. That's huh? true. 
I, I thought you saved. That's the way the, de the sinners are. Yeah. That wicked man and wicked woman to bring you down just like them. Only if you allow them to dictate the emotions of your heart. How many here when they pray to ask God to give them strength? Raise your hand. Now, my question is to you, what do you ask God to strengthen? Your body? They sound like a bunch of hummingbirds. <laughs> now, let's go to school. Because we consist of more than a body, That's right. don't ever pray and ask God just strengthen your body. Because you consist of more than a body. More than body. Mind, soul, body, and spirit. and spirit. So all the elements of self need to be strengthened or built up in God yeah. because it is all the dynamics of self that's under attack by Satan. That's right. Satan attacks the mind. Oh, yeah. You break a person mentally, that person will crumble. Oh, yeah. A person's mind is the foundation of their existence. That's right. If the mind collapses, the heart collapses, the body collapses, collapse. spiritually they're in a rut. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you want a strong mind? Oh, my. And that will give you a strong heart. That's right. Which will help stabilize your physical behavior in obeying God. Amen. And ask God to strengthen your spirit. All the dynamics of self yeah. must sit under the hotness and the coldness of the word to strengthen your divine being. That's right. Are you listening? And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod. Your feet shod. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hold it. Your feet shod. Shod. With the preparations of the gospel of, of peace. peace. The gospel prepare your feet how to walk. That's but right. notice, it's called the preparations of the gospel, the gospel of, of, peace. of peace. Peace is directed at the feet because God is not the author of confusion. Wonderful. So God will not lead you in an atmosphere or a climate of confusion. That's right. So the preparations of the gospel of peace, of peace, letting you know that the gospel will stabilize your steps and give you peace. Yes. And sometimes for you to have peace, again, you have to walk away walk from away. him, her, or them. That's right. That's right. Let me say it again. Amen. Many times to have peace, you got to walk away from him, her, or them. Yeah. That's right. I'd rather have peace with God than have peace with the human family. Amen. Amen. Listen. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wait, 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 wait. Amen. Notice how this reads. Above all. That statement is not attached to nothing else he's going to read. No. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. Why? Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Why is faith above all? Above all. The reason why faith is above all, because none of the other things work right. if I don't believe God. That's right. That's right. Nothing else works. Nothing else works. None of the armor works. Yeah. Faith activates all the armor. That's right. That's right. All the armor is tied to my faith. Amen. I cannot put on the armor of God when I don't even believe in God. That's right. It is written, he that cometh to God must believe he is every water to them that diligently seek him. God is the thread that holds all your armor together. Go ahead, man. Without God. Go ahead, brother. Your armor falls apart. That's right. Above all. Notice. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. Why is faith called a shield? A shield, mm. a shield is used to absorb blows. That's right. Faith is used to absorb problems. That's right. My trust in God is like a buffer. Mm. When things come my direction, I believe God and my faith in God help me to handle or absorb the problem better. That's right. 
Now, if I got a shield and something's constantly hitting my shield, my arm will get bruised. My arm will get sore. That's right. But at least my arm is intact. That's right. That's so right. situations may cause me to get bruised yeah. and have pain, but at least my spiritual well-being is intact. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. Believe God. That's right. Above Need the shield of faith. Where and we? without the faith, mm -hmm. no other part of this armor works. That's right. Listen. Uh, above all, taking the shield of faith. That what? Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Quench what? All the fiery darts of the wicked. It never said just darts. Fiery darts. Fiery darts. Fiery darts. Fire mean power. Yeah. Darts, that which penetrates. Mm -hmm. So Satan bring that which penetrates into your mind, soul, body, and spirit, and it's powerful. Powerful. And they can damage it. That's right. Make you hate the ones that love you. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Turn you against the light that brought you out of darkness. Right. That's right. And then put you in a pretend church. Amen. A church that pretends to be holy. Yeah. Listen. And take the helmet of salvation. And the Hold it. And take the helmet of salvation. How many here brothers played football? You used to play football. When you play running back, brother, you go through that line yeah. and you drop that head. That's right. The helmet of what? Of salvation. Let's go to school. The term salvation means deliverance or healing. That's right. Now, the helmet of salvation. salvation. Helmet is head protection. That's right. Why do your head need protection? You need protection from the dumb thoughts that you have, <laughs> the right. wicked thoughts that you have. Right. And so the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Right. So we want to inherit or take on the mind of God, mm. the thinking of God. Mm. So when we approach problems, we will approach them the way God wants us to approach them. That's right. It is written, the and thought of foolishness sin. is sin. sin. So we don't want to approach things without our helmet, helmet of salvation. Salvation means deliverance, so we need God to deliver our mind from the way we think, because the way we think gets us in trouble. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. So you need the helmet of, of salvation. And, and if you notice about a helmet, it covers the whole head. <laughs> Amen. Because the whole head need deliverance. That's right. Because the book says the whole head is sick. Is sick. It's sick. Amen. That's what the word of God says. The whole head is sick. The whole, not half of it, no. not part of it, no. not a third of it. In the book of Isaiah chapter. I, listen, be quick, son. Isaiah 1 and verse 5. Says what? Why should you be stricken anymore? Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. You're going to be hard head more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. And the whole heart faint. Look at the whole, and the whole head is sick. Whole head. That's why you need the helmet of salvation. That's right. Because Satan is constantly throwing stuff at your mind, and you need God to deliver that old wicked hell-bound mind you have. That's right. Even while the word of God Even being preached, it's amazing how your mind will go one step beyond or to the outer limits. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Read quick, son. Back in Ephesians 6 and verse 17. <laughs> yeah. And take the helmet of salvation. What? And the sword of the spirit. Wait a minute. You need the sword of the spirit. What is that? Which is the word of God. Amen. You need the word. Amen. I keep telling you, we ain't moving from it. That's right. You can't fight without the sword of the spirit. The spirit. Why is it called a sword? Mm -hmm. Because God separates and cut us cut ties that we have with that which is ungodly and that which is wicked. Only the spirit can disconnect you from evil. That's right. And sometimes the evil that you connect it to, you mistake it for a friend. Yeah. And you need God to help you to sever ties between you and that devil that you're too close to. That's right. All right. And take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation. And the sword and the of the spirit. the sword of the Lord. Which is the word of which God. Which is God's word. Praying always. Praying how much? Always. You got to be prayerful. That's right. Why do I got to be a prayer for Pastor Dennis to help keep you dressed? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Sometimes your armor can come unravel, but if you pray, it helps tighten it up on you. That's right. Glory to God what is that? Praying always. Praying always. With all prayer and with supplication all prayer and in supplication. the spirit. How? In the spirit. Hold it right there. Amen. Let me explain this Amen. praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit don't mean every time you pray you in tongues or you shake it. 
No. Do you understand? That's right. Give me the book of Corinthians. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I want to explain what do praying in the spirit mean. 1 Corinthians. A lot of people think praying in the spirit mm -hmm. is just when you're down there praying and the Lord deal with you. Hakalaba shata rumba 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 rumba. Or you're praying in the spirit and you're about to go through the floor. <laughs> That's right. Uh-uh. No. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> Glad for the move. <laughs> But let me enlarge That's right. on the meaning of spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15. Listen. What is it then? What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I remember also. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, what are they? They are spirit. They are what? Spirit. All right. Now the Bible says I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. Let's go to school. Now, if Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, the words. So when I pray the words that I utter, the words that I utter cannot contradict what the spirit say in the book. That's right. I cannot ask God for anything that violate the book. That's right. I cannot desire nothing that violate the book. Right. I can't make a request that contradict the book. That's right. And no need for me to pray and I'm arrogant and high-minded and self-will. The Bible said if my people which are called for my name will humble, humble themselves, themselves, then pray. Humble. I got to humble, then ask. That's it. And when I'm humble, then ask, I still can't ask outside of God's will. That's right. What is it then? I, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I got to pray with the Spirit so my words got to coincide with the words of the Lord. That's right. And, and I will pray with the understanding also. Know what you're asking for. Amen. Good teaching, brother. Sometimes what we ask for, we can't handle. That's true. That's true. Pray with understanding. Understand. Amen. Oh, Lord, I want a wife. What kind? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Lord. Lord, I want a husband. You got him. Now you don't want him. Hey, now you don't want him. <laughs> Amen. Lord, my wife left me. Bring her back. When she come back, Lord, send her away from here. <laughs> Amen. Pray with understanding. The understanding. Understanding. This is how important or how sincere you should be about your salvation. Whatever you ask God for, if that thing will cause you to be lost, tell God, don't give it to you. That's right. That's right. Put your soul as the top priority. Amen. Make that more important mm -hmm. than anything you want in life. That's right. You can have the man, you can have the house, you can have cars, you can have money. Yep. So, yep. none of those things will save you. All those things will perish. That's right. That's and right. this is what's distracting people. People brag, oh man, I own my house. Nobody in here own their house, even if it's paid off. Amen. You can't prove that, Pastor Jennings. Wait till you die. Wait till you die. And see, can you take it with you? That's right. That's right. You get all crazy about them, that chinchilla your husband stole for you. <laughs> get down about your fur coat because you got a dead calf on your back. That's right. Or a rodent for a pocketbook. A rodent. Huh? That's right. I don't care nothing about that mess. No. Got on your alligator, crocodile shoes, fine. Go ahead. You can have on a whole snakeskin suit and slither all through the church. But remember, you better shed that evil. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, take God. You better shed that evil. So all of us, family, all of us, you that are watching and you that are here, need to get dressed up with the armor of God. Some of us started to get dressed, but Satan hindered us. That's right and start stripping us. Yeah. That's why our mind is worse than it ever was. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes preachers taught you how to put it on, the helmet, but they never taught you how to strap it. That's right, that's right. See, when we played football, yeah. we just didn't put the helmet on. We had a chin strap. Yeah. 
And even then, if the hit come too hard, mm -hmm. it'll knock the helmet clean off your head. Yes, it will. Teaching not only shows you how to put the helmet of salvation on, yeah. but it also shows you how to keep it on. Keep it. Because when you, like a running back, man, when you got the hand off that ball, mm -hmm. the objective of the defense is to go after that running back. Right. And they don't care if they got to jump over men that's blocking for you. That's right. They are gunning for you. It been many times, man, when they hand that ball off to me, boom, I'm running. Running. And sometimes, because I ran track and jump hurdles, sometimes when a person come down, I would jump over. Mm -hmm. But one day, <laughs> glory to God, <laughs> one day I said, <laughs> And Williams can bear with We was playing ball and I was doing a punt return. You that know what a punt return is, they kick it down. I was in the back, mm. running, boom. And just running, breaking tackles. Just <laughs> shaking. <laughs> brother, this one brother, and he's probably watching and listening. Reggie Hinton, Reggie Hinton. listen. That was over 35 years ago. Yep. And so that hit had to been so good. <laughs> 35 years ago, I still remember. Amen. Man, Reg could play. Oh, yes. I saw Reg coming from that backfield. He was moving. He was calculating. <laughs> I'm coming this way. I did a move, and Reg timed me perfect. <laughs> Reg went off both feet and hit my, from my knees to my ankles, he took both legs out. And I remember spinning. <laughs> like that soap opera, as the world turns. <laughs> I remember my eyes open and everything. And when I hit the ground, blew, I hit the ground so hard, the wind came out of me. <laughs> Reg came over and looked at me and laughed and said, Nicky, you all right? He helped me up. Man, I had to shake his hand. I said, Reg, that was the best hit I ever had. Wow. That, that, he took my legs, my legs out. out. <laughs> Sometimes, because we are half-dressed, right. we have assumed and took too much in our hands that we are mentally, emotionally, spiritually is not even prepared to handle. That's true. Listen, the Bible said that the strong bear the infirmities of the weak, correct? Yeah. How in the world are you going to take the burden of your brother and sister when you can't even handle your own? That's true. First, know yourself. That's right. You have to know your boundaries, your limitations. It doesn't matter. God is not a hype. Right. No. You ever come out of prayer, man, you feel like you can push buildings over. You say, oh, man, you feel so spirit, man. You out there walking the street. Hey, glory to God. You on your job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just walk. Hey, brother, you all right? Yes, I am. Yes. Your boss, brother John, you all right? Yes, I am. Glory. <laughs> all happy. All happy. That day. You happy that day. That's right. Notice what I said. You're happy that day up until 4 o'clock. By 4.15, all it takes is the right phone call. That's true. With the right amount of problems and circumstances, right. and it make you forget that you even had the Holy Ghost. That's right. If you're not careful, you'll be on that phone. Why you mother? Oh. Yes, you will. I thought the Lord delivered me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Know yourself. And the only way you can truly know yourself, you got to have experience that challenges yourself. That's right. Man, you can jump and shout and roll around till you turn to an egg roll. <laughs> experience teaches you yourself. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. So don't put yourself on no pinnacle and God didn't put you there. Nope. Let the Lord exhaust you. That's right. He that exalt himself shall be a base. Yeah. He that humble himself, God will exalt him. Will exalt. It's not based upon the amount of scriptures you quote 
how many times you come to church, how long you shout, if you shout off every song hmm. and grind your heels down. That's right. Remember, when the benediction is given, now you got the world to contend with. And it's my job as a minister to teach you how to deal with the world and how to be dressed with the armor of God and mm -hmm. remain dressed because Satan will strip that armor off yes, of you. Yes, he will. And Satan don't always strip the armor off viciously mm. or violently. Sometimes it's just subtle. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Subtle. subtle. It's like that man who's subtle and got experience. And he's with that woman. Before she knows, she feels something on snap. <laughs> what, what, wait a minute. What happened? That's right. His hands are subtle. Yeah. She don't even remember how he got back there. She thinks something broke. It ain't nothing broke. That's right. You got a subtle demon around you. That's right. He's a safe cracker. Amen. And that's the way the devil is. The devil subtle. Is. Before you know it, your helmet is off. Yeah. Before you know it, your breastplate is gone. Yeah. Because some man or some woman came along and told you and convinced you that you can have just as much confidence in them as you can God until you don't need church. You don't mm. need God. All you need is me. You such a dumb fool. You believe it. Believe it. And now he or she got you going to hell and your loved ones is pleading with you to come back to God. But you so blindsided you see nobody but him and her. That's right. And they teach you how to hate God yeah. and how to hate church. And got you believing all you need is them. And once they coerce you, manipulate you, and use you and abuse you, won't be for long, they'll dump you on the side of the road like recycled trash. That's right. Because all they want is to get out of you what they want. Right. Until they can't get no more, until you come to your senses and don't give up no more. Right. That's right. Put on the armor of God, Whole church. Armor. That's right. You that have not repented of your sins and was not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you don't have no armor. No. So I would like to dress you. That's right. The first clothing, you, you, you're getting the first clothing now. Yes. You're hearing the word of God. That's right. Be sorry about being a sinner. Mm -hmm. You know you're one. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, I go to church every Sunday. So do insects. Yeah. And they're not sorry about crawling on you. No. We want you to be sorry about being the sinner, dancing, smoking, drinking, gambling, partying, lying, right. two and three wives and five and six husbands. That's right. Want you to be sorry about going to the club. You ain't that far down in the south. I know y'all got clubs here. Amen. 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 Bible said repent. Then Peter in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, South Carolina, mm -hmm. it's time for you to get on God's side. That's God's right. side. Come out of every church in the city. Which one, Pastor Jenner? I said every church in the city. All of them. Come out of all of them and walk in the truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Repent of your sins and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. To get your sins washed away. For the remission of sins. And, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Everybody got to walk by the same rule. And mind the same thing. Anybody don't want to go to hell. If you don't want to go to hell, if you want to go, hell is available. <laughs> That's right. I mean, if you want, if you're you so cute, to you're too cute to be baptized because you're scared your mascara is going to mm. be all messed up. Hell going to ruin it. Yes, it will. Hell going to burn it clean off your face. Oh, yeah. You better hear the old man now, Mr. and Miss Thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to be right with God and be baptized. baptized. And get your soul right with God. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. If you don't want to go to hell, stand on your feet. If you want it. Amen. Wonderful. Come on. Amen. Wonderful. You that are standing, go straight to the back right there. You that are standing, go right to the back. You that are standing, go to the back. My job of being here in South Carolina is to save your soul. Come out of all your That's churches. Right. Follow the truth of the gospel. We have a local church here in Florence, South Carolina, 1010 Gibbs Avenue. Be there. We have a local temple in Columbia, South Carolina. What's that, 2801? 2801 Schoolhouse Road. We dedicated the beautiful temple there. 
Orangeburg, God willing, we're looking to be coming to your area there because you're you just bombing me with letters. Hmm. You want us to come back and open up the temple there. They want us everywhere. Yeah. Everybody in here that's not born again, you need it. <clears throat> come on back this evening at 5 o'clock. You ain't got to stay home after you eat your potato salad and chicken. <laughs> eat your potato salad and chicken and your collard greens and your fat back and come on back here. Amen. And hear the word of God preached so we can conclude this meeting. Let us all stand. We we'll ask Brother Minister Harris to close us out in prayer. Eternal and everlasting Father, Lord Jesus, we give you the highest praise, the glory, and the honor is thine. Oh, Father, we thank you for the man of God that brought forth the truth of God this day. Lord, have mercy upon every heart that heard the word. Bless all of them going down in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, prick their hearts and their minds that you don't have but one church, one gospel, one kingdom, and one place that they're going to reject your word will be hell. Let them make their minds up this day to serve the Lord thy God. Always, Lord, watch over the man of God, him you have ordained with your gospel to preach to the whole world. That we can save souls and be prepared to preach to all of them. I'm so grateful to you, Father, that you always show us mercy, always keeping us in your grace. Bless every heart, watch over us, sustain us and keep us. And all these blessings we ask in, in the holy righteous name of Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty, let God people say amen.